Right, what's going on, guys? I'm gonna wait for some of you guys to get on. I know it's been a while since I've been on here. I've been settling in. Uh, it's very cold. So, most of you that don't know this uh, moved to Michigan. So, it's been, I think, two weeks, almost a week and a half. A week and a half or close to maybe close to two weeks uh, that since we settled in so we're still settling in getting all the other stuff it's very good so far so for some of you that have been wondering this is where I've been and that's also another reason why I want to give this video obedience and submission I'm gonna wait for some of you guys to get on right now because I have a lot to talk about lots to talk about very important stuff I titled this video, The Power of Obedience and Submission, uh, especially because of some of the stuff I experienced. I was talking with a few, a few um, friends of mine the other day, or for the past few days, and I've even told them, like, the demonstration of all this, of power, the power of obedience and submission. It's very interesting that the 21st century church you know, we want the gifts, we want the power of God, we want the things of God, but we sometimes we're ignorant to those things. We don't know what produces that, what produces the power of God, what produces the, the blessing of God. So I'm about to tell you all that right now. Just wanted to say some of you guys that were wondering, I'm doing well. I had some family members that were asking uh, how I am how my wife is, we're all doing well, just sending a little baby and everything is fine. Uh, it's, we've been just settling in. I do apologize if I look tired. Uh, earlier I woke up around maybe like two in the afternoon. It's doing a night shift. So I, I do apologize on that. I don't look my best today, but I wanted to give this video. I know some of you guys were waiting for it. I was just really excited to uh, keep you guys updated. So, Obedience and submission. This is something that the Lord was showing me. Something that uh, the church needs to hear. Like I said, the church is focused on... Sometimes the church can be focused on the blessing of God. Or the power of God. The things of God. We want God to move these things. We uh, we want... We want uh, just like a... We want a whisper of words of wisdom. We want a whisper of things that are uh, very that are very beneficial to us. But what produces the power, what produces the blessing of God? As a matter of fact, what produces the favor of God? Have any of you ever wondered, you know, why does God gives, give this person um, favor of, upon all these other people in this area? In the Bible, we see favor is mentioned many times in scripture. We wonder, what is favor? Is favor, is favor, uh, something that a word that describes who God loves more than another person is favor the favor of God just God wanting to bless that person over someone else I'm going to show you what the favor of God really means as the Lord is putting this in my heart uh, and I've experienced this he had to humble me about this there's two meanings that obedience and submission have so number one obedience and submission does not mean the same thing but they do go hand in hand obedience it's the act of uh, obeying orders the act of following instructions compliance uh, restrictions regulations or commands that's basically obedience you're just following through what's uh, ordered from you what's requested of you submission completely different it's the act of yielding to one another. You, the act of doing it, of following those orders out of love, out of respect, out of loyalty and willingness. Now, two different things, but they go hand in hand. And the Lord is showing me this. He was showing me this throughout the past week as soon as uh, we got here to our new home to Michigan because uh, many, many of you know has, he's called uh, my wife and I to be the armor bearers of uh, my father-in-law and so on. I've already explained that. You can go look at the other video. But uh, one of the reasons why he was showing me that is because the church lacks this. We lack power. We lack wisdom in these things. It's all produced by 
obedience and by fearing the Lord. Even the first commandment of, of wisdom. And I'm saying this as the first uh, requirement when it comes to wisdom in the, in the book of Proverbs. What does it say in the book of Proverbs? Get wisdom. And, the, and to wisdom, the very first thing to wisdom is the fear of God, the fear of the Lord. That is an act of obedience and submission. That's what stirs up the approval. That's what stirs up the blessing and the favor of God. Uh, let me see. What's another one? In Mark chapter 12, verse 28, I was writing all these down. And it says, I'm going to just read this to you in, the, in verse 28. That the scribes asked Jesus, uh, what command is the, most important, is the most important of all? And Jesus replies uh, in verse 29, the most important is, listen, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord our God is one. But he says, he actually recites uh, Moses' words in the book of Deuteronomy, that to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is love your neighbor as your command. There is no other, what to say, command greater than these. So the two, the two uh, greatest commandments above all the commandments. Jesus says these. Why does he say these? Because they both require uh, obedience and submission. So obedience and submissions are necessities to God. They reveal the true fruits of true followers of Christ. And they produce growth and power in the body of Christ. And these actions of obedience and submission please God. They please God. And when it pleases God, he releases the kingdom. Uh, he releases the kingdom things. He releases his blessing over your life. And God does require obedience to his word. And he also requires submission because of who he is. It's because of who he is. He deserves all the glory and all the honor. And obedience and submission, I'm going to say it again so you keep on getting in your head, it brings favor from God. Now, what is favor? In the Hebrew word, uh, favor, which is chen, that's what, he, that's what the word favor means. It has many meanings in all the same context. It means grace, pleasing, or approval. It's very precious. Favor is something that Daniel had in the book of Daniel. Uh, it said that Daniel had favor, a favor from the king, that he had favor from God. He was gifted with wisdom in all things. It says this in the book of Proverbs that uh, the favor of the Lord brings, it brings favor to mankind as well. When God has favor upon someone, it brings favor to in the sight of God and man. So favor is the grace of God, is uh, pleasing God. Blessing, the word barak, blessing, in Hebrew means to release. It means adortion. It means abundantly and to praise. Obedience and submission stir up the favor and the blessing. You see, when you stir up the favor of God, then you stir up the blessing of God. Instead of focusing on the, instead of focusing on on receiving the gifts or receiving the things of God before focusing on the obedience and submission, the church will always fall apart. The church will always fall apart. The families will always fall apart. The nations will always fall apart. Even the world will always fall apart. It'll never work out unless you learn to obey and submit. And I'm not just talking about with the Lord. It says, the word of God says that all authority, all authority Worldwide, I'm talking about authority in your household, authority in your in businesses and in, in the work, uh, in the jobs, the work areas, in the schools, and even government. All authority is ordained by God. The book of Daniel says that he sets up kings and tears them down. He raises them up and he brings them down. He appoints whoever he wants in office. Do you know in the book of Acts, it even says that King Herod and Pontius Pilate were appointed by God. The same men who gave of Jesus to being crucified. And in the book of Peter, it says that all authority is to be submitted and obeyed to. Why is that? 
And I'm not saying to go against the word of God. And unless they go against the word of God, then, you know, there's a boundary there. But I'm saying the word of God says that all authority is to be submitted to. And uh, you have to obey and submit to them. Why? Because all authority is appointed by God. And when you learn to submit to the authority of that God is placed there, you're not glorifying them. You're glorifying God. And because of that, it brings you a humble, obedient, and submissive spirit. An obedient and submissive spirit is what brings the unity in the body of Christ together, which is something that we have lacked in this generation. I have many other scriptures here. Uh, look at the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. I'm going to read it all right here. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commandments in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let, the faith, let love and faithfulness never leave you, Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. See, it says, then, notice that big then. So Solomon is, is repeating the words of his father of David, and he's writing down the scripture, and he's writing down all this in scripture. He's writing down all this um, in Proverbs chapter 3 verses 1 through 4 and David is telling Solomon this and as Solomon is repeating it he's repeating this he's writing this down not just for other generations to read but he's writing this down so he can remember this it says to let the love and faithfulness be binded around his neck the commandments being binded around his necks because commandments are meant to be obeyed and uh, they're meant to be submitted to because they come from God order comes from the God of order the God of who created everything in perfect order. But notice as when it says that big then, when it says then you will win favor. As soon as you do all these things, it says then you will win favor and a good name, meaning reputation in the sight of God and man. You see how powerful obedience and submission is. Obedience and submission takes you so far. You know, God even calls you a friend. He doesn't call you a servant anymore. He calls you a friend. I know many people are so focused on saying, I serve the Lord. We're all bold and we act like we're so spiritual and we say, I serve the Lord God Almighty. I say, I serve the Lord Jesus. But yet we forget God's not looking to keep us as servants. God's looking to keep us also as friends too. I'll prove it right here. When Jesus says in John chapter 15, verses 9 through 6, uh, through 16 Jesus says this as the father has loved me I have also loved you remain in my love all right if the big if if you keep my commands you will remain in my love notice the big if just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love this is my command love one another as I have loved you no one has greater love than this to lay down his life for his friends but then he says you are my friends jesus doesn't say servants he calls the disciples before he ascends to heaven he calls the disciples his friends he says you are my friends if he says if you do what i command you you see obedience and submission also brings friendship and intimacy with god and i'm gonna keep on going you are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants anymore. Because a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I made known to you everything I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you to go and to produce fruit. And that your fruit shall remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. This is what I command you, love one another. Now when he says the Father will give him, when you ask in his name, then the Father will give him. But it all starts off with the if, that big if. If you obey and submit, I will bring you favor and blessing and whatever you ask will be in my name. Of course, it's in the will of God. But God is requiring just obedience and submission. In the book of Samuel, it says that obedience is way better obedience is way better than sacrifice the reason why is because sacrifice is something that we do um 
that we do and we you know when we say we sacrifice something for God we do it off of what we think it's best we do it off of what we did and it leaves room for us to receive glory sacrifice is like saying I did this for you so you know I deserve this no sacrifice does not leave room for glory it doesn't leave room for glory for God obedience is what God requires first above all things the very first thing that actually got Lucifer kicked out of heaven and turned him into Satan was the disobedient uh, heart. God required obedience, and what did Satan do? He fell from heaven because of that pride and that oh, and that disobedience. It wasn't mostly because of the pride was one main thing, but we overlook the fact that Lucifer fell from heaven because he disobeyed God. Because he wanted to put his, he wanted to put a throne above God. He wanted to exalt himself above uh, the highest authority, and this is why he fell like like lightning from heaven. That's how quick, that's how quick he fell because of his disobedience. That's what. God, that's why God requires obedience. It was disobedience that destroyed the Garden of Eden and that created sin, the very first sin on earth. Disobedience. Um, dis disobedience was the cause of that from Adam and Eve so God therefore requires obedience and submission I say this to you church I say this to all of you people all of you people watching on Facebook social media whatever uh, where even if it's going to be on YouTube all social media to learn how to obey and submit to one another obey your family members your friends um you know, something that something that glorifies God is going to be that. And learn that submission is not just following orders just because. Don't mix them up together. They come hand in hand, but don't think they're the same thing. Obedience is always going to be following those orders, but submission is following the orders because you love them, because it's out of loyalty and respect. It's out of glorifying God. And with these things brings favor. And it brings the blessing of God. You want to stir up the blessing? Don't focus on the blessing. Focus on the obedience and the submission and the blessing will end up come. It says in the word of God that first seek the kingdom of heaven. First seek the kingdom of heaven then all things shall be added unto you. But it all starts out with first. Because when you're seeking the kingdom of heaven, you're seeking Christ. And when you're seeking Christ, he is the kingdom. The kingdom is his. And it's his freely to give. And it's his to give so we can inherit that. It's all God's. It's all God's kingdom. But it all starts off with obedience and submission. Learn these just simple principles. And I promise you, it'll take you a long way. And it's uh, very overlooked in the church. But it's very simple. It's very simple. It's not hard. The only thing that makes it hard is our emotions is our our pride is our um, our reputation we want to put our reputation our pride and all of our emotions before obedience and submission and that's where it brings us down and that's why our church is divided i actually had a uh um i was actually upset about this maybe more and more i was bothered about this maybe uh a few weeks ago i had somebody who was uh I guess wasn't even reaching out to me called me a false prophet called me a false prophet um, a few weeks ago so this man was telling me I'm a demonic false prophet because I'm married I guess I don't know his the thing was completely off in scripture I'm just gonna say long story short uh, because I was married or whatever because I I'm married uh, he doesn't I don't know it's a whole it's a long story he says I'm a false prophet and uh, that you're not supposed to be married. It was real weird. That you're not supposed to be married if uh, you're a believer. It, I don't know. He, he falls in like the Jewish tradition, but it's not really accurate. I don't know. It was a whole bunch of stuff, which was completely off topic. But he, aside from that, called me a false prophet. So I said, okay, uh, why don't you teach me then? Well, why don't you at least, you want to call me all these names first, but you don't want to teach me. You just throw scriptures, but you don't want to tell me the context. You just want to... Uh, fight with me. Where's your love? My pastor's words will always stay with me. Even here in Michigan, I still, I can never forget the way my pastor says this. 
back in Texas. He always said, you know, that so many people, they come at you with scripture. They come at you with the word of God like a sword, but they have no love. Instead of using the sword to cut the ropes and to cut the tides and to cut the chains that the people are on, they end up cutting you. And people have the word of God. They know it, but they have no love. And as soon as I was uh, talking with this person who called me a false prophet, my pastor's words just, uh, I can hear them just clear as day in my head. Um, and I wanted to fight back with this guy. I honestly did. I, I really did want to fight back with this guy and put him in his place because this guy, I hate when people call themselves teachers and rabbis and yet they have no fruits to show. They have no proof. It's, it's, they're completely off. I really hate that. I, I hate ignorance. I really do. I hate ignorance. It's evil when people try to come in the name of ignorance. But then I ended up, um, I ended up telling him, well, look, man, if you, if you continue calling me that, if you continue saying that, you better be careful because you're going to bring the judgment of God on you. You're going to, God's going to humble you. And I don't think you're going to like that. I'm telling you, why don't you just, I told him, why don't you just teach me then to try to warn him. I better stop that. And after all that, um, I just ignored him. He kept, I had to block him off my, my messengers, my messenger on Facebook. And I guess he was still going on, called me a goat. I don't know. It was a whole bunch of names. It was horrible. My wife noticed I was like pretty upset, but as soon as uh, everyone, she went to sleep, I ended up just praying. I don't know. I just felt I had the need to pray for him and, um, I had the need to pray for him. I had, the, I had the need to humble myself because I knew I wanted to say a lot of things and text him back. Hey, look, this is what scripture means. I wanted to tell him all that, but um, I could just hear the Lord's voice telling me, don't cast your prayers before swine. Just pray for that religious spirit. Just pray, pray for that religious spirit to be removed away from him because we have a, we have a hard time obeying, you know, when um, in that moment, I know the Lord is telling me to obey to obey the commandments that he gave to love that brother to uh love the lord with all my heart mind and soul and strength and how can i do that how can i obey the lord in those commandments if i'm putting my emotions first and if i'm uh if i'm fighting with that other brother who called me a false prophet and a goat if i did all that if i didn't pray for him if i didn't do all that if i didn't humble myself how would i um uh, how can I obey and submit if I'm putting all that first? You see, obedience and submission is what holds up a government. It, it's what holds up the world. It's what holds up the church. As soon as we learn to obey and submit to one another, because not because it's something that we do for them, but we do it because it glorifies God. It'll take you a long way and stir up the blessing of God. Even if you don't expect the blessing, it'll still come no matter what. It brings you a good reputation. It brings you... Um, it's beneficial to you, even though you're not seeking the benefits, you're seeking the Lord. It just comes naturally to you. And it's no wonder why we don't got to preach on all that. We don't have to preach on it so much because we live it. We don't have to even talk about it because we live it. We walk in obedience and submission. So that means we walk in blessing and favor from God and we walk in power. We walk in all these things, but it first starts off with obedience and submission to the Lord. Uh, let me give you one more example. I want to give this, I want to give you guys one more example. Uh, my whole family has helped me out financially, family, friends, all that. They've helped me out financially with their prayers and with um, their support. As soon as I came over here to Michigan, I knew in my heart that before, actually, before coming over here, I had to pray really hard about this. I had to really take my time. I was really, I had to really be patient about this. I told my wife, I have no family here in Michigan. Uh, I think I maybe have one, um, maybe one family member, but we're not really close. But my whole family is down there in Texas. And as soon as uh, I knew the Lord was telling me, I, have, I had to come. I had to come because my father-in-law, I knew that we had to be his armor bearers. I, I just had to be there. Not my wife. It wasn't because of her. It's because the Lord told me I had to. And I don't have any friends or anyone here but i i have been uh shown things from the lord and on the way over here i know some family members are asking how are you going to make it you can't make it all the way over there like that how are you going to do this and then we wanted to take a trip to arizona to visit my wife's uh, my wife's grandpa for thanksgiving so we did all that for that first week and then the next week we came over here just driving in my truck and we got everything and 
I was for a bit, I was a little bit worried, but at the same time, I told her we're gonna be fine. I don't know how, but we're gonna be fine. We had, I'm not gonna say how much, we just had quite a bit of money I had to save up. Uh, Cause I told her I didn't want her working anymore cause of the whole COVID. So, and her being pregnant with my son. So um, I had to do all that. And out of nowhere, my family just helps me out of nowhere. Um, let's just say that it really helped us kick in. The Lord is, has been helping us, you know, how to spend, how to manage our time and our money wisely properly around the areas. And we've had more than enough. Uh, lucky enough to find me a job within the first week uh, here. So that's why I look tired because I've been having three days straight with night shifts, uh, enough hours, benefits. So all of that, all just everything falling in perfect place, perfect order. I didn't even expect any of this to happen, to be honest. But all I knew was the Lord called me to come. It was just that act, that small act of obedience and submission. And I say this, I boast about this in the Lord because I know he's taken us a long way. And I want you guys to experience that. I want you to understand this is how the church ought to be. To obey when God says something, you better do it even if you don't know what's in it for you. I didn't know what was in it for me. All I knew is that the Lord is going to help us out. And he has. It gets me emotional thinking about it and talking about it sometimes. My wife even asked me, uh, what do you think would happen if we didn't meet each other? I was like, I'd probably still be in Texas. I don't know. I mean, I'd still be serving the Lord. I honestly would. Um, because it's, it, I didn't get with, I didn't, uh, get into things of God because of her. We were already in that before, but we think about it to all this, like all this that's happened and everything just moving on the Lord's timing. It's perfect. I got married. I got married, uh, I got married fast with someone I love. I already have a son on the way. I just bought a truck a while back. Uh, I'm in a new state, new area, which I love diversity. There's more diversity around here. So the Lord has actually given me, and I, I actually prefer the cold weather over the hot weather. So I'm excited to see snow. Uh, it's very cold here, but I'm excited. To see, it's, I don't know. The Lord has uh, brought us a long way all because of love, the love, um, the love of obedience and submission and it's very um it's very humbling it's very humbling so what i want to just really encourage you with today what to do today even right now this very this very moment go take your time praying go go and take your time reading the word of god go and take your time maybe go even watch a video go praise and worship whatever it does to glorify god follow that act of obedience to the Lord and let these scriptures just sit in your heart let these words just sit in your heart and just deposit in your heart so it can grow I want to give you uh, one more scripture to just at least one more scripture to just seal the deal one more scripture Proverbs chapter 15 verses 29 it says the Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. And from right there, that last scripture, he's far from the wicked, but hears the prayers of the righteous because the wicked are the disobedient and the ones that, that don't submit. But the righteous, not the perfect, but the righteous people of God, the righteous children of God, they are the obedient and the, and the submissive children. And because of that, because God calls them the righteous, because the righteous are obedient and submissive, God hears the prayers. And as he hears them, and as he hears them, he answers. But for the wicked, he is far from the wicked. He's far from the acts of disobedience from the wicked. He's far from the wicked uh, not submitting to one another, not submitting to the Lord. So I want that to really sit with you before you go to sleep. I want that to really sit with you as you wake up, as you do a task, as you go into the work area, as you go and, and you go deal with that boss you don't want to deal with, or as you go in and deal with that person you don't want to deal with, as you go talk with your pastor, as you go talk with even the, the leaders of your church, be obedient and submissive. Those are the keys in the kingdom of heaven. Those are the keys in uh, bringing the church together. Usually when we do things, 
that divide the church is because we lack obedience or we lack um, submission. We don't want to obey what the pastor says or we don't want to obey what the leaders say or we don't want to submit to them. And we might even obey to them, but we don't want to submit to them because we don't want to respect them. They, two different meanings, but they go hand in hand. They are required necessities. Uh, this is what God requires. And because of all that, it brings favor and blessing. So I'm going to end off right there. Uh, I want to say this to some family members I know that are usually watching. Uh, I love you guys. I miss you guys, especially those in Texas. I also have another, I have a personal request. Uh, please pray for us. And please, if you are in the Michigan area, <clears throat> um, I do know I have people that are from other parts. I'm, Facebook is worldwide. Uh, YouTube is worldwide. So I, I do have other people that may, that may live in the Michigan area. So if you guys have, um, a barber that <laughs> if you guys have a, a personal, if you have a personally, if you have a barber that you recommend, I, I just need to find just a decent place to get a haircut. My hair has been growing out and that's why I'm wearing a cap. Please recommend me a haircut place in Michigan, especially Grand Rapids, because that's where, uh, I, I really need a haircut around here. It's, I can't be looking at, I can't be looking like the sound of these streets, but I love you guys. I miss you guys. And God bless you. Have a good one. And good night.